everybody. Welcome to the What Culture Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Taylor, joined by Ben Roy Taylor. Hello there. And Josh Brown. Hello there. Chaps, my friends, we're all kind of still recovering from the biggest talking point in relative, a re- relatively recent gaming history. Um, the whole the whole big old deal with Microsoft buying Bethesda, buying a bit of the old Zenimax. Um, ben Roy, first up, what are your thoughts to this? Because me and Josh have already reacted many, many a time on cam. Are you still recovering? Uh, I, I still don't know how to take it because... Uh, if you're if you're Phil Spencer, if if you do if you're playing the business game, you lock all that behind your door and you go, nah, see you later, sorry. But then you get a lot of the bad press. Uh-huh. But I, I don't, it's weird, like it's been taken pretty well so far. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, I, I just, the thing that I keep coming down on, and we did this a little bit in the news, is everyone's like, oh my God, they have like 23 studios going forward. This is huge. And I'm like, yeah, but what have they got now? What have they got right now? What am I actually going to play on the system I'm dropping half a granny on? Like, Wolfen- Wolfenstein 3 is going to be coming soon. Another Prey is going to be coming soon. Maybe another Dishonored. Uh, soon, Arcane- though? I mean, Wolfenstein 3 is around the corner because what, mm. like two came out a few years back. So we're, yeah, due, we're due one of them soon, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I think they're going to have to lead them as first party sort of products or even pseudo first party where all the branding will have Microsoft stuff everywhere. And then there'll be the PS5 copy in the bin around the corner <laughs> of the game. Like you've got to go and ask the man to go but through the beaded curtains to get to the PS5 versions of all these games. <laughs> it's a weird way. Of, I mean, the thing is the question I was going to pose to uh, all of you is just that whole, I think we're right on the brink of a service based future. Um, and I did a predictions piece a little while ago on the idea of conglomerate ownership of major franchises and IPs and companies. Um, um, because there was that whole rumored deal. I forget whether it was Sony or Microsoft, but one of them was going to buy Rockstar. Josh, you remember this? Yeah, yeah. I think from... it was Sony uh, Sorry, for a little yeah. bit, or at least apparently they were going to... I think I think it was more than Rockstar. I think it was something stupid like uh, Take-Two as a whole. You know, something ridiculous. <laughs> it was Bethesda. Like, but after Bethesda, it might, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe well, Take-Two was on the cards. So this is the thing. There was, there was that whole rumor about Sony buying Bethesda and that whole idea of like, oh my God, you know, we're on the cusp of this streaming feature and this idea of storefronts dominating everything. And every company is out for themselves. They need to buy all these different IPs and lock them down so that everyone's individual storefronts have all the best deals right in front of you, Netflix style. So when you load that service up every week, you know, whatever, as new was right there and um and when that rockstar thing happened that was kind of what i started to talk about i did a whole piece predicting it and then now with the bethesda thing i'm like okay this kind of forces them into that reality because sony negated that whole thing and said oh we weren't actually planning to buy rockstar but now with microsoft buying bethesda there's only so many massive companies bethesda style companies that are available do you guys see the future of gaming being service-based being like you know ps now game pass nintendo switch online whatever and it's just up to every company to lock down all these other individual dev groups to make sure their storefront is as strong as it could be not right now i don't think maybe Mm. in the future i feel like this might be a microsoft 2013 thing you know when back then they were predicting an all digital future they were predicting things that are only starting to properly come into popularity now seven years later i'm sure we will get to a space where streaming and service-based um products are kind of more dominant you know microsoft's obviously making that its thing but at the Mm -hmm. same time you do have um you know publishers and console makers and software makers pushing back against that like sony the other day was saying we're not going to directly compete with games pass because we just essentially can't afford to do it you know our first party titles i think it was jim ryan who has admittedly been been talking a lot recently all jim has been doing a lot yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think he was saying, uh, you know, we make these first party games that have $100 million plus price tags. It just mm. doesn't make sense for us to put those immediately on a service like PlayStation Now. So I feel like the financial reality of it is perhaps detached from what some companies are actually pushing for because Microsoft can afford to take these hits. They can afford to take like losses on consoles at launch. They can afford to spend $7.5 billion on a company like Bethesda. They can. Mm put their first party titles out on game pass if it gets people on that service because ultimately you know xbox for better or worse isn't as vital to the overall microsoft brand as playstation is to sony so they can take the hits and they can try to mold the um the industry in in their image as it were but whether or not everyone's kind of going to follow suit whether or not nintendo Sorry, I'm just uh, getting very excited and my entire, <laughs> entire body is trying to fold in on itself. Whether Nintendo or Sony or whoever, Google Stadia is going to follow in that same in the footsteps. I just, I just don't see it right now. Maybe right. eventually. I think it's like going to be akin to what we have in film. Like, if you think about, say, a low budget film compared to a low budget game, like you don't really see that immediately. Like, say, you you might get your like side scrollers or say. Uh, 
I'm just trying to think of one off the top survival of survival games. Yeah, you you can sort of tell like a low budget game straight away, but whereas like you look like say films that we have like say four or five big studios left, and then we got like Disney's and then the mm-hmm. Netflixes that like just bring us contents we can put on our platforms and the mm-hmm. Amazons. So I think you're going to have some of the you the the bigger players in the game like playstation and xbox have these platforms and say like maybe playstation should do a thing like just buy konami's game division and then just get rip that out <laughs> rip their library from their hands so they can pachinko away <laughs> and more sort of like the higher budget looking games which are only getting more and more expensive to make mm. as it goes along in their sort of uh their camps and then still have some of the well, ones like a devolver digital i'd say like will keep going and keep publishing putting out games and helping like the smaller mid-tier budget games get out there that makes mm-hmm. sense or well that's the thing that that's what's so fascinating about it is like it does it benefit the devs like does it benefit the project ideas does it free up like more experimental game mechanics and, and different ways to make games or does it, it it'll, it's all going to depend on who's at the top of xbox like the whole thing that happened with ubisoft like as soon as that um search hasquare guy whatever left he was the dude that was mandating the ubisoft formula yeah. mandating everything to be open world loot systems whatever and so like if any individual or smaller group of individuals then are in charge of all these companies at once you kind of only ha- you only have them to decide what's what and but at the same time the more market dominance they have the more time it frees up the availability to do more one-off ideas so like does it benefit devs and publishers as well devs particularly to sign with big companies like th- that security is kind of like a double-edged sword I think for the most yeah. part it has done, but then you do get some of that crash and burn. Like uh, I can't remember mm. who made Drive Club, where they just sort of like fell down, and uh, oh, God. the game was a year late, and then they yeah. basically got disbanded. Uh, I mean, you never really want to. The rumors you never want to sign up EA because they just take you and then it just juice well, you known until for you've, it, like yeah, till you've got nothing left, sort of thing. But it's weird with the professor stuff because you think about like say even five years ago, it's, it seems like a few smart business deals that got Bethesda, especially their publishing arm, so mm. high up. When all of a sudden Wolfenstein was coming back, and uh, I mean for that for and the main professor stuff has been a bit weird, isn't it? Like, they've, like, they've got a weird rep like this it's generation. All in. Yeah. All that sort of thing, all this sort of stuff started coming out of their sort of publishing wing. He's like, wait a minute, this is all, this is all like, I would say all AAA, like definitely all AAA stuff sort of coming out of there. And to reasonably good quality, like Dishonored, people love that as well. Mm -hmm. So I just think that they've made a few good business deals that have led them into basically ranking their price up and probably a lot of the 7 billion is for uh, Elder Scrolls and Fallout but I was, but I was like, looking at a um, comparison as well that um, when Disney bought Star Wars that was only around 4 billion uh, dollars and this is like this is still almost twice that because the, the IP that they've bought Skyrim, Fallout, yeah. well Elder Scrolls Fallout, everything else is just worth so much more and I guess they want to cover future costs as well Totally. I mean, you like you look at the gaming industry in general. Like that's worth more than the film industry. You know what I mean? Mm. Like it makes more money. You know, overall, it makes more profit. And when it comes to, I totally agree with Ben Roy. In fact, that when it comes to Bethesda's publishing arms, especially, mm. like they've been knocking it out of the park in terms of giving the developers the freedom to make these original games and those games to be like great. Some of my favorite titles this generation have come from Bethesda's kind of publishing house. It's been like The Evil Within Two, Prey, you know, stuff like that. But the issue is, for me, because Bethesda has only really become like this AAA publisher quite recently over the past five years or something, they did their first E3 like, what, three years ago now? Remember that being Uh, a big deal? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they were like entering the game. But I just feel like when it comes to anything outside of the Elder Scrolls or Fallout, they've just kind of dropped the ball in marketing it. Oh, they've been a terrible or, publisher, yeah. Yeah, like when it comes to, you know, the review copy fiasco where they weren't giving out review copies for good games for whatever reason, yeah. you know, the lack of marketing, the lack of push, it's made titles like even the original Doom, well, Doom 2016, like that came out to little fanfare at launch. Mm-hmm. It was only through word of mouth and how strong the game was that it became this super big thing. And it's why we've seen games like prayer like the evil within 2 just not sell well at all so my hope is that under microsoft those studios and those other franchises get a proper push get a, a bigger focus get a bigger piece of the marketing pie and get people behind them who can really sell those franchises because they are great devs they are great games they are great series that you know, even though the games themselves were good under Bethesda, no one was playing them. So no. what's kind of like the point? 
Well, I mean, we did a, um, <clears throat> a video, I forget who I did the video with, but we did a thing on like after Dishonored 2 crashed and burned, Prey had crashed and burned, Evil Within 2 had crashed and burned, in terms of sales anyway, that all those games are really solid. And it was like, Bethesda, why the hell are you not marketing what are clearly some of your most promising IP and game mechanics and everything else? Um, and yeah, you have to assume, I mean, another prediction I have is that like with Bethesda joining Xbox, so much of Bethesda stuff is going to be front and center on the Xbox marketing. Game Pass is going to be right, you know, here's everything that Bethesda do alongside the EA Play deal that they just did as well. Um, that has to translate into a better quality control on Bethesda's part. Like they can't have a Fallout 76 size disaster because then it's it's Xbox's disaster. Like if, if they did, you know, anything on that level. Because um, another question I had as well is how much do you think they'll tighten themselves up? Because Bethesda have been loose as hell this this entire generation. See, no, no, that's a jump in again, but we disagreed on this <laughs> yesterday, Scott, because yes. I don't think they'll tighten up that at all, especially when it really? comes to actually Bethesda Softworks, you know, like the Todd Howard's company, the people who make Fallout in the Elder Scrolls, mm-hmm. just because we've, we've had the confirmation that Bethesda will be publishing, presumably, Bethesda Softworks games, so they're going to continue to take the flack <clears> on <throat> that anyway. Mm. And then you also look at titles like the Master Chief Collection, how much of a complete disaster that was at launch, you know what I mean? It's not like mm-hmm. Microsoft has these games and ships them at this like top tier level well, all Halo the time. Infinite like, was just yeah. on fire, yeah. Exactly, Halo Infinite, also on fire. Like there's also, definitely Gears like, 5, a lax thing there. Mm-hmm. Gears 5 was on fire in the connectivity on the campaign as well. Like towards the end of that game, you'd go into the um, the third area, the snow, the sand area, and the game would just totally melt. Some of the, t- so like, you know, is that not, does all these things not point to the fact that they can't let that happen again? I mean, Bethesda are known for this stuff. <sighs> I don't know, man, because we, we <laughs> always say this. We say this when it comes to like Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed, where like they can't keep getting away with it, where that Jesse Pinkman meme from Breaking Bad. But <laughs> we, we've seen the gaming industry as a whole. And Microsoft are usually pretty good, to be fair, when it comes mm. to you know support and stuff. And But we've seen like the gaming industry just push their luck time and time again. We've had so many different Bethesda releases that are buggy and broken and just are not where they should be at launch. And I do agree that Fallout 76 in particular was a kind of turning point, but that's mostly just because the game itself was bad. Like mm. if those bugs were in a really great Fallout game, it might just be like, oh, classic Bethesda, they've done yeah. it again. You know what I mean? I, saw, it was, it was, I mean, it was, I hope they get better. Yeah, it was like tied with such a, you know, <clears throat> they were trying to do this massive online push that nobody really wanted anyway. It didn't really work with what Fallout was and then it, the, all the pre-order stuff and everything just kind of fell apart. I would just hope that, you know, they do something because, I mean, Starfield is still going to use the same engine. They already said it uses the same engine as Fallout 4. So it's just like, I think that stuff has to change. Like 76 happened because ESO was like a lovely happy accident for them where ESO mm. is like still one of the silent biggest things ever mm. and they were just trying to do that again with Fallout but I think because they lie, like because basically lied to us you know you could play this on your own oh, there's, there's going to be quests they always say all, that as well Yeah, they're, they're all robots though but um, <laughs> I think I, I would put ESO Elder Scrolls on like a Star Wars level in gaming term like it's just that popular I think it can mm. and Fallout I think they can triple fall and then they can come back and then hopefully not then fall again straight away. But it, it's weird. But if you go back to the, the publishing arm, like everything they've put out, I don't, were any of those games actually broken? Because they even had interesting stories like Evil Been 2 didn't end like how he was, Prey, uh, well, the that was the, games. That's like the crying right. shame with them is that their best stuff with the, with the Bethesda name attached isn't made by Bethesda. Like the Bethesda Game Studio stuff has been really just crap. Like that's the stuff yeah. with the broken game engine stuff, the things that were fixed months after. But all the, all the deals they did, the aid software, you know, the Dooms Evil then Prey Dishonored like like, like they're different studios Arcane and everything they were that was why it was so sad when Bethesda as a publisher just couldn't hold up their end of the bargain and do a really good marketing push because the games were great and like I mean like Josh you absolutely love Evil Within like yeah. they just they've so, only ever done it okay <laughs> they've only ever done like a disservice to that IP um, but it's like assumedly all those things all that would change because now it would be oh your new releases on Game Pass it's right here the whole 15 million people see it on one day one yeah I think I think you're going to see some sort of like maybe maybe someone behind this and go, well, oh, maybe um, use a different engine now, or maybe well, upgrade I don't the so, engine. Yeah. Like you'd think something like this, well, they wouldn't just <clears> go ahead and then put out a Starfield and then it come out on fire and then be like, <laughs> Xbox bought this thing and they've wasted seven billion. You'd, well, that's what I mean, right? Because yeah. that, it has to tie together. It, it's part of the Xbox branding and marketing. And I get I get the updates from the Game Pass app saying like this game is now added to Game Pass. Go play it right now. And like if that goes out to what is now 15 million subscribers and they log on and they go on the new Bethesda game or they go they try. Fallout 76 and it's a complete broken mess then that Xbox are culpable for that like they're going to be rolled into it 
Comparing it to the Star Wars deal again, though, and I guess the Marvel deal as well, obviously both of those companies, both those franchises are owned by Disney, but they mm. all have their own individual studio heads, and it kind of sounds like that's how Bethesda's going to function here, just because they do retain some of those publishing rights. Like, I wonder whether they're going to be kind of autonomous, but they still answer to, like, a higher up, like a Kevin Feige does for the entire Marvel right. Studios, you know, still answers to Disney ultimately, but he kind of, like, calls Joe the Spencer shots. like. Yeah, like we had, um, you know, Kathleen Kennedy on um, Star Wars and Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm was calling the shots at Star Wars. Mm. And then obviously they had to report to Disney, but they were kind of autonomous in what they were creating. And I just, I, I can't see Microsoft kind of coming in and instantly taking over just because of the deal that they've made here no. being like, look, we, we're going to put this person in charge of this. We're going to restructure this. We're going to make you do this. Like mm. for as buggy as Bethesda's games are, they still have a reputation. They've still sold really well. Mm -hmm. And until if, until that goes, I feel like they would just kind of want to buy them as is because it is, you know, kind of a successful model in a lot of ways. I tell you what, though, because um, you wouldn't think that they would get that granular with development, but Phil Spencer took Scalebound up behind the sheds and just put an absolute True. bullet through the head of that. So I, I do yeah. think I do think they're gonna. You'll get less of say like um, what was that Wolfenstein game that came out last year? Cyber no uh, or young blood. Young blood. Yeah, I think you'll get maybe less of them. That these small little things, the little I wouldn't call them cash. To make them. I wouldn't yeah. call them cash grabs initially, but uh, sort of quicker turnaround sort of things. I do think that you'll. I, I think they might. They've got to change something with their. They're not going to use the exact. This is my prediction. They're not going to use the exact same engine for stuff. And I can't see it. He's already with, said it. Todd, Todd Howard said they're using the he, same. He one did say it, but as he said it, as he said it since yesterday. <laughs> he says no. That's the thing. He says many yeah. things. Yeah. And he also Todd doesn't have Twitter, so he hides away. So he's, he's now going <laughs> to be hiding away via Phil's he's on Phil's uh, shelf. I reckon there'll be. You've got to see that there's, there's got to be some sort of different analysis for that. Like. They they could give them they the thing with these sort of big like deals is they normally get time time mm. is the bigger sort of resource in a lot of things so you'd hope that they wasn't like sort of cranking out by the whip like we must get Starfield out because mm. what Starfield is not going to be like another three odd years yet probably for the It'll size that they want mm -hmm. and, and then, I mean they have the logo for um, Elder Scrolls Six as well which again I mean that's that's another that's what I kind of mentioned before is like they've done all these deals but we're not going to see the fruits of any of that that labor for three four five years like it's still going to be forever in the future totally, you imagine. But Sorry, I was going to say, like, for, the, for, for me, like, even though it is a kind of future proof, and we've heard that before from old Phil. Phil keeps coming out, and he's like, we've bought all these studios, we've got all of these plans in motion, and we're kind of sitting here like, well, when, when are these crows going to come home to roost, or whatever the saying is? When are we going to find out the fruits of this labor? Yes. And we haven't seen it yet. But that said, with the amount of kind of talent they currently have like over the next few years we've got to see something we've got to see something from you know avowed or whatever obsidian is doing next we've got to see something from like arcane or bethesda themselves or you know whoever rare uh, or anybody yeah rare or anyone you know what i mean like there's too many studios like you said at the beginning there's like 20 plus studios now mm -hmm. like even if it might be us once again going we need to buy into the future we've got nothing for now that is definitely true but it it is a good future. You know what I mean? It is a nice future. <laughs> You've got a good thing going at the moment. And it is, I said in the news this morning, it's enough for me to invest in Xbox now. I was on right. the fence. I was like, well, what have you got? Should I just get an S? And now with the promise of all of these developers, all of these franchises potentially coming to Xbox, mm. like I, I want to be all in. I want to be all is in, baby. Not... I want a Series X. I want to be in there. Is that not another weird um, anomaly like problem though? Because they bought all these developers, they have all these different dream teams. They now have the combination of Bethesda, Obsidian, and Exile could make an RPG together, like which would be a dream team, super team thing. But they also have to make sure that all those things work on the S. They have to make sure that those devs don't play to the strengths of developing something that could only work on the Series X. Like they have all this potential that is still potentially, like, you know, if you go off what some devs have said, like Infinity Ward or whatever, potentially held back, bottlenecked by their budget console. Like that's a whole other reality to the way they're approaching the uh, next generation, which just so many questions. I think that the the math that they've done, the business, they've seen how many sh how many um, s's they're going to shift at that pr price point. And it's like, yeah, like you, you've got to imagine. Like we know we know game scientists, whenever like that. But you got to imagine mm -hmm. that they can hopefully just do what you do on a PC. And like um, when developers develop a PC, they've got like all this everything to think about. I said like uh, even for free, which you don't have for a console really. But like you just got to imagine that they can bring the the scale down a bit right. and hopefully just account for that. Like, 
if not, then the Series X is going to Series S is going to be a problem. But I don't think that's the thing that I just, I just, I, yeah. I just that what boggles my mind. How do you make something that it rivals the PS5 and is on your premium console, but is still doable on the Series S without sacrificing enough that makes the people that forked out extra for the Series X wonder what the hell they're doing? They will play FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my phone plays FIFA. It doesn't make it, you know, it's not going to match up. Yeah. I don't know, like, like a lot of things when it comes to next gen, we have to kind of just wait and see. You know what I mean? Mm. There's been a lot of promises, a lot of um, plans for the future, and a lot of confusion over actually what's going to happen. A lot of stuff walked back, gonna happen. like A lot right of stuff now. walked back, yeah. Mm. About the cross-gen stuff, about PlayStation's Jim Ryan being around, doing the uh, Don Matrix circuit, and just <laughs> be like <laughs> talking when he should. We've got a PS5 for, for people bit. like you. It's called the PS4. <laughs> exactly. Just, uh, so I don't, I don't, it's, good, it's like, like we've been saying, like, it's just going to be such a strange generation to go into because we do have all these questions. We're two months away from launch. Mm-hmm. Studios are being bought at an unprecedented rate. We don't know how Sony is going to react, if at all, because Microsoft's kind of just undermined a lot of their plans. They have timed exclusivity for um, Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo, which were Bethesda games. They were apparently um, trying to get Starfield as a timed exclusive, which yeah. obviously isn't going to happen now, but it's like, no. Well, no. <laughs> um, will Sony like react at all by buying their own studio? Will they buy, I don't know, uh, Square Enix Rockstar, or Take Two or something? Rockstar. The, and is that rumor that Sony have one more, the, the one more thing before the new gen, like apparently at TGS? But you've got to imagine with like the Starfield thing, they look back at that email for Starfield and just Phil Spencer replies in the gen, <laughs> lol, and then that's it, that's it done. <laughs> but I, I feel like. The, the whole thing with um, the idea of, like I said, of buying up like conglomerate ownership of these different companies is, assumedly, the Microsoft deal has been in the works for a long time. It isn't a reaction to Sony buying Spider-Man, Sony buying Final Fantasy 16. Assumedly, this is something that Microsoft have wanted to do for a long time. Is that then the case? Because Sony are a way more of a reactive company. Microsoft might be slow, but they plan. Whereas I think that Sony get very reactive about stuff. Well, you say this, but according to the Bloomberg report, mm. uh, apparently this deal was only started talks properly in like the summer of this year, which is right. a crazy turnaround. Still a so few like, months though. I mean, I mean something oh, yeah. that Sony react to this and then go, okay, we need to turn something around because Microsoft right. just revealed the Bethesda buy and their consoles are now being pre-ordered and sold out everywhere. That's a hell of a thing. Duh, we need to do something. Like, I, I don't know what that is other than just sort of <laughs> knocking on Rockstar's door and being like, please lads, let's have GTA 6. It's, it's so I, I, I imagine that I, I don't like the the biggest fear for me is like if a Capcom would get bought because that would just be right. horrible because then you want them to remain their own entity like you th- like because Bethesda is, wasn't exactly on a downturn like maybe in the public eye but they were still worth more than ever right so yeah. you got to imagine anything's on the table Sony they might have all these other divisions that are failing but they're still they're still the big hitters and they could probably grab anything but who else is out there who else like they're not going to buy an EA or an Activision are they so well. Well, maybe, assumedly not, no. Maybe just, yeah, no. Just, I like, <laughs> w, I, I, is, there, is everyone okay? Because WB were like, oh, maybe we just want to get rid of everything. Oh, no, actually, people want this. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. And then it's like, what's going on? Like, we'll take I, Batman, thank can, you. No, no, Konami aren't picking up the phone. I just need to know what's going <laughs> to <laughs> But that's, that's the overall thing. Is like, yeah, is this just the way? Because the thing is as well, I remember when things like Final Fantasy Metal Gear were tied to PlayStation across the late 90s. I know that those in Final Fantasy's case started on Nintendo and everything but that whole thing of like when Final Fantasy went multi-platform that was a big deal because it was a PlayStation series if you grew up with you know 7, 8 and 9 and 10 um, and it's that whole thing of like does this fundamentally take the industry backwards quote unquote in terms of you know Microsoft are striving for everything available to everybody but if the reality of service-based industry is that things have to be locked to those storefronts then exclusivity becomes a massive thing again and I mean Bethesda are <laughs> locked down now they can't you know, it's on Microsoft yeah. whether or not they exclusivity get exclusivity was a massive thing this gen. Apart mm-hmm. from the fact that PlayStation pretty much had everything, and Xbox had nothing. They had Forza every year, and yeah. then they had a bro- broken Master Chief collection and two Gears games. Like they, in terms of ownership, like fundamentally, they're going after companies like Bethesda to lock down entire. Catalogs. I think they might put. I don't think everything is going to be one hundred percent exclusive because, like, they could just go nah, Minecraft's ours now, but they're not. Sony are oh, yeah. putting out a baseball game out on um. MLB. They're putting out on Xbox next year or this year. So like we're starting to see more cross-gen publishing and I think we will. I think they're probably going to like say 
nibble off a bit extra extra bit of the pie and put that this is ours we're not having this mm-hmm. but i don't think you're going to get like doom wolfenstein evil within or like locked to xbox uh series x in this through i don't see i think they will play that oh, part it'll be timed I, but i think they'll do that i may be timed but i don't see maybe like maybe you get like elder scroll 6 only on xbox forever because <laughs> you can still play that next you can still play that on pc through right. like the xbox and everything else like that through their sort of system and they might even put on steam but i think it's almost worth them having the one the one big thing to jab like mm, take that god of war go away but <laughs> oh, like dudes yeah dudes but, dudes dudes I just, I just don't see a reality where those games are cross-gen anymore like no. why would you spend all that money to not have doom and evil within or whatever yep. on your um console as exclusive or on pc or whatever i can i can do i can maybe see like like i said before like the big hit is like the big fallout big uh, elder scrolls potentially being cross-gen but absolutely or for me it's like absolutely not when it comes right. to wolfenstein and doom and stuff like that because why spend all that money if that's the case i yeah. know or, well, like the you're only... saying, better, right? you do like to see like Microsoft is open to you know putting things on other platforms, but like why? What only would be once, the end though. game? Yeah, yeah, like what would be the end game to what to shift some more software sales? Why shift more, more software sales when you can shift hardware and you can make your Game Pass service be more appealing? You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> just. I think what they it makes more sense. The only way you probably if we go through D- Josh Brown's dark future, uh, <laughs> the dark times. The only way we ever get those games on PlayStation is if uh, they let Game Pass, and then it feels like you can have them. Game Pass, right? <laughs> oh, that'd be a hell of a weird compromise if you had to, because they've already talked about putting Xbox Remember when Live Steam. on Steam. Steam yeah. was going to be on PlayStation Three, and then that never really properly happened. Like, right? You, you, anything could happen but would you want then like you've got to think about as it as if it, the pseudo war would you want them behind your lines in your sort of machines so it's, <laughs> it's all sort of weird to think like about some apple epic thing like they yeah. they go okay we'll have the game pass app on but we're going to date we're going to date a capital you can only access so many games or something like that just I, all this stuff like i said the mind boggles but it's like it depends what um xbox or microsoft want from the next generation like they're pursuing the netflix for games model but the more companies they lock down the more that forces other companies to snatch someone else up before they can do it and then all of a sudden we're back to the exclusivity thing and we're back to the 90s gaming scene i feel like we're not going to see so i just don't (laughs) feel like we're going to see exclusivity kind of go like it's already been a huge thing forever i don't think that ever yeah but in first party circles like it's like it's very rare that you've got massive third party deals well they're all first party now they're all first party well hi yeah, well, even then, yeah like, until yesterday now they're classed as first party but that's the, that's what i mean like that changing that changing of things is what makes those companies first party and all of a sudden all their entire bodies of titles all belong to one company totally totally i just i just i don't know exclusives have always been too important and i feel like microsoft didn't move away from it but obviously they're back in the game now and hmm. even when it comes to sony like they have obviously cultivated their own worldwide studios they've made their own franchises that they are absolutely proud of they're going to hmm. champion those they're going to rely on those because they do really well and then they've just been throwing around a load of money to you know um second parties and third parties to secure timed exclusives or to, to, to secure console exclusives they just don't seem interested in kind of going the microsoft route and like locking them down like it was a huge deal when they bought insomniac for like Mm. 200 million or whatever and that was after what a 20-year working relationship with them with insomniac making exclusive games for sony consoles for the most part Mm -hmm. so it's like sony has always been fighting that same battle just kind of like in a different way like not necessarily feeling like they need to spend billions of dollars to like lock these studios down because they're cultivating their own and they can get by on these kind of like more third party deals with call of duty or with final fantasy or whatever mm. and it seems like that's worked for them but i do i am interested to see if that changes now with this acquisition if the game like you said completely shifts and they feel the need to be like well the old model is out we need to be even more aggressive we need <laughs> to double down on this we need to start buying um more teams mm-hmm. well it's kind of like what, what's the alternative of them not doing that like are microsoft going to stop now are they satiated by buying bethesda like how much of this was just one giant optics move to secure pre-orders they, for the next console they had nothing i, I would say nothing is reductive right but mm-hmm. in the eyes of many they had nothing going into no. new gen they had 
the the promise of another gears the promise of another halo fable and a few other things that with the were on that press mm-hmm. their press videos which i've forgotten shows how impactful they were sort of thing but or like Forza. they they had nothing but you could line up all of all of playstation's chips like they were this this they were got a war horizon nah, da, da. Miles and Miles. yeah and that even in some people's eyes, Resident Evil with like the the VR it feels like mm. more of a PlayStation sort of eccentric thing. So uh, Final Fantasy, you said, so they had all their chips, and this is just feel basically after a generation of basically scrubbing scrubbing his desk clean of all the last bit of Don, and now he's now got back in there and he's put his he's finally lined his desk up how he wants. He's got the pens there, nice, and then he went oh professor as well. I think <laughs> it's just literally it's taken so long. Like these mm. are these are giant freighters room room. The Xbox was gonna be getting into T V and have their own sort of every game was gonna have its own sort of channel. Like what was it? Um Quantum Break had this show and that's uh, yeah. so it's taken so long to change course and game pass has been the big thing in that the whole time and now this is like one of his the final part of his plan i don't think they're gonna buy more because at this point what's the point i think they have enough why wouldn't you though like they've got ea they now have bethesda do you do a deal with ubisoft like but like how no one's gonna touch ubisoft right now Hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. I, you know, feel like there'll be like third, like like the same with, with Sony, like maybe some kind of like timed exclusives, but I can't see them like spending another three billion to buy another kind <laughs> of um, big publishing house just because, mm-hmm. you know, like financially, at what point does it stop making sense? Like, sure, you've got all of these um, franchises, you've got all these teams, but not only do you have to subsidize the upfront cost of literally billions of dollars, but then, you know, even from this Bethesda thing, they've got 2,300 employees on the payroll now. So that's yeah. Like something they've got to think about. Mm-hmm. You've got to develop the games after this. You know what I mean? You've got to pump hundreds of million dollars into making these games. Like, at what point does that business model become untenable? You've already got twenty-three studios in house. Mm-hmm. How many more can you financially add All on? All of top that of as this? well is well, hanging on Game Pass because that yeah, was the exactly, thing that Jim Ryan yeah. was talking about. Like, oh, it's not, it's not feasible. Um, but then you know, they, the Game Pass had a fifty percent increase from ten million to fifteen million subs, even in like April. It was like the last month or something. Um, and like that's the whole assumption based on the revenue model is that as long as you have fifteen million people paying a monthly fee, that is fundamentally worth more than cashing in on a individual exclusive every three or four months. And so, like, maybe that works, but like, 15, at some point, it has to. It won't. It won't come together. Fifteen million times a tenner is a lot. I think, <laughs> yeah. basically, in the, in the grand schemes of things, but I, I don't think they're going to buy anyone else because I feel like this is this is the big the combo deal that you've gone for. This is like right. you, you've ordered the biggest. You you don't get any more than this. I don't. I, <laughs> I love these metaphors. Like yeah. Phil Spencer gorging himself on. Uh, <laughs> just, he's yeah, gone to Domino's. He's gone for the biggest meal he can get. He's got the big daddy box from KFC. He's like, there we go. This is his <laughs> big thing. Yeah, yeah, he's just gone. He's got the um. What is it? The popcorn chicken. Ate, he yeah. threw himself just eating it. Just I don't think <laughs> he can go anymore i think and i don't think playstation needs to do a mega super buy i think that they mm. could do a, a kind of super buy with a konami as i keep saying mm-hmm. uh, i i think that this is them for now and they've you're going to have i think this is when you're going to start seeing like wolfenstein 3 is now going to get may get announced soon maybe and uh, yeah sort of thing. it'll be interesting to see what the first thing is this for you've got to have one of them games from them those studios ready for the end of the year i think and i think mm-hmm. they will get to be announced later next year anyway for the for the christmas period so who knows mm-hmm. it reminds me of like when um when dc and marvel were sort of going at each other's throats like as their movies rolled out like every time you would get a dc trailer every time dc was about to get some momentum and marvel were like here's an end game trailer here's an end game teaser here's something else here's thanos doing a dance here's whatever and they just they just upended them at every single turn yeah and i think that microsoft buying bethesda gives them so many opportunities to do teasers to like you know switch and um, to bring social media spotlight back to them um because optically like you know that idea of like say sony's next announcement for the rest of this year is Silent Hill being an exclusive um, or even a timed exclusive, is that bigger, quote unquote, in a social media trending Google traffic space than Microsoft buys Bethesda? Like, I just, I don't see Sony being able to compete. And so I think that, like, then what do you do if you're Sony? You've kind of lost the optics of it. And like, even like Josh said, it's it's brought you back across to wanting to get the Series X. Like, a lot of people, like, you know, are going to buy one of these systems and it comes right down to the wire. And so, it, like, Microsoft do this play to be like, we have Bethesda in the future. Sony either don't do anything or they play their Silent Hill card. Do they have anything that they could even do? I, I was, I mean, I w- I've had an Xbox just for like one series pretty much. So they already <laughs> had me. Like, I can't imagine how many more Gears of War, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and a bit of Halo. I can't imagine how many more they're going to put in with 
by the way, Doom, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, oh, well, so just like, you know, just yeah. railing them off. Like it's, 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 it's a crazy thing to think about. Mm-hmm. And they got, they got Josh to spend an extra 200 quid. <laughs> oh, I know. I know what they have. But it was like, it is funny, like, talking to people. Because even though Sony has, like, in my opinion, a great stable of franchises, a great mm-hmm. stable of teams, because Microsoft have done this right at the very end of the race, when we've got pretty much all the other cards on the table, we know Sony almost certainly doesn't have a trump card on this level. And, and they've gone, well, look, look at this seismic thing mm-hmm. we've been saving to last. Look at this ultimate one more thing. Hail it does Mary. get you thinking and it makes you it kind of does undermine everything else Sony has done, even though in my opinion, what Sony has done has been pretty top notch. It just kind mm. of blows it all out of the water and you sat thinking like, well, what do I do now? Because even though you haven't confirmed if Fallout's going to be exclusive, even if you haven't confirmed what's coming next from these mm. studios you've just bought, the promise of it, the, the seismic shift of it, the gargantuan nature of it is enough to like turn heads. It was enough they to turn my heads. They also said that that won't my be heads. the case. Like if they yes, exactly planned like. on these games definitely being cross-plat, they would have said it. And I think that like them just being, Phil being like, oh, it's case by case basis. And then um, Todd and, uh, and old, old Heine being like, oh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll you know, figure it out as we go kind of thing. We're still going to be a publisher. Um, if you were committed to cross-platform, uh, multi-platform releases, they would have got out and said it. Um, but yeah, I just, I think it's one hell of a thing. It makes me worried and excited in equal measure. Um, I guess just general quick closing thoughts. Do you see this as a good thing for the industry, Mr. Benroy? Yes, because <laughs> I... I, simply for the fact it's like a Wolfenstein and a Doom are never going to fully die now because Microsoft mm. owned them. Sort of mm. thing. So I'm thinking more like, remember that period in Doom and, Mark, and Wolfenstein were just gone in, on the floor somewhere in someone's cupboard. Now they're there forever. So in that aspect, yes. Also, I think it's good for Microsoft because they just needed a win here. And now PlayStation and Sony and everyone else are like, oh, what's next? This yeah. competition drives competition which is good mm-hmm. if a horse is on the floor dying or old yellow style taken behind the shed then yeah i'd say i did one quick quick thing i was going to say josh when you were saying about like it makes you wonder about where to put your money and stuff it, it feels like you're choosing between the present and the future like the present mm-hmm. is sony because they have a launch lineup like they have a bunch of exclusives destruction all stars miles morales sack boy whatever demon souls they have things to play on day one whereas you're playing for the future and um, with xbox and you're waiting two four years some yeah. amount of time um but it depends you know some people only have can only afford a console every few years so it's it's just very much that but yeah do you think it's a good thing for the industry this whole approach to ownership honestly like (laughs) tbd i don't know i'm not entirely (laughs) sure yet like again because it's such a future thing i'm gonna have to see how it plays out my initial reaction is usually i don't like um you know one company owning everything and microsoft do own Mm. a lot at this moment in time but when it comes to bethesda specifically in this specific case like there were just too many good franchises and studios kind of not getting their due in my opinion, even mm-hmm. though they are making great games. I just feel like they were a little underserved. I want to see those ideas reach the biggest possible audience, get the biggest push possible and not be overshadowed by Elder Scrolls and Fallout and hopefully mm-hmm. can exist alongside them on that same level. And if Microsoft can deliver that and, you know, allow Arcane, allow, you know, Tango Gameworks to make either continuations of the franchises they've already spawned or new IP and give them that big push, like they presumably are doing with Obsidian, you know what I mean? It's kind of mm. like that leveling up for this for these studios. And that's not to kind of undermine what they've done. Just, I think that's how it's kind of perceived by a lot of um, you know, more casual players who don't really know what the evil within is. I don't really give <laughs> prey the time of day. Like I want them to become the next big franchises because in my opinion, they deserve it. And if mm. Microsoft can do that in a, in, a, in a way that's much better than what Bethesda was doing on their publishing arm, then for me, it is a good, it's a good thing. Even if I am resentful, that I'm going to have to buy an Xbox Series X at launch now. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I do, uh, I do. The, 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 some of the stuff fascinates me. Like I'm sure Shinji Mikami is still at Tango Gameworks, like the dude that gave us Resident Evil 4. And it's just like, what does he do now that he's joined Microsoft? Resident Evil in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah Resident Evil yeah. in general. But he was the guy. He was the guy that was like, put the camera over the shoulder. We should fight. We should shoot this way and changed the industry. And it's like Microsoft have recruited him, like just on the side. Like he's just one of Tango Gameworks members. And um, that stuff's all fascinating. But yeah, the sheer exposure to a wider variety of titles, like day by day, um, if they can manage that, it it it, it, it automatically beats the way that Bethesda were approaching those teams. 
Microsoft have been reorganized into the first galactic empire. It's just, here we go. <laughs> just... Hopefully they're for the good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let us know what you think down in the comments below if you're watching the video version or come find us on uh, social media if you're listening along on the audio platforms. For now, this has been the World Culture Gaming Podcast. I've been your host, Scott Tilford, joined by Ben Roy Turner. Goodbye. And Josh Brown. Goodbye. And we'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye. See ya.